the Democrats and Republicans are in big talks around the fourth stimulus check and have decided not to pass this infrastructure bill unless President Biden's economic agenda is passed along with it. Everybody, this is putting a hold on our stimulus payments and this is really frustrating. Many Americans are still in need of financial help. In fact, the unemployment benefits came to an end on Labor Day sending many Americans into financial distress. So President Biden must realize that the infrastructure bill must be passed. Do you guys agree? Depend on where you live. Getting cancer treatments or insulin to manage diabetes should not depend on where you live. Now through the crisis, Americans who work in certain essential industries have garnered praise as heroes for doing their job. Many of our essential workers are getting an additional stimulus payments. Food workers, for example, are about to be rewarded with something previously thought to be elusive for most of us, and that is a fourth stimulus payment. Tens of millions of third stimulus checks went out earlier this year, following the passage of the $1.9 trillion stimulus bill. And now the IRS normally operates as basically a collection agency. So even if it sent out the three stimulus checks, child tax credit payments are still being sent out through December. And the U.S. Agriculture Secretary announced the crisis relief payment a few days ago specifically for food workers. It was the House, the Senate, and the White House came to an agreement on how we can consider, go forward in a way to pay for this. It's part of a larger $700 million effort to help farm and food workers. Accordingly, a one-time $600 payment is going to farm workers and the U.S. meatpacking workforce. A portion of the $700 million, totaling up to $20 million, will go toward helping grocery store workers. And as I said everybody, stimulus payments are being sent out. The American Rescue Plan provided us with the third round of stimulus checks worth up to $1,400. And through the last six months, there have been more and more debates and petitions for lawmakers to send up more stimulus payments every single month. But President Biden cannot do this without taking a vote from Congress. Pressure has mounted for the president to make future stimulus checks or recurring payments automatically deposited directly into the accounts of millions of Americans. 26 Democrats, in fact, have signed multiple letters, all sent to the White House, pushing for more future payments. In one of the letters, a congressman highlighted the success of the American Rescue Plan, and he talked about the importance of making future payments automatic for Americans. Do you believe in automatic stimulus payments, folks? Tell me in the comments below. These priorities, a higher percentage uh, in the Senate. But we wanted to make sure that it was paid for. And I've always, you know, I'm a PAYGO person. After years of small increases in Social Security checks, older Americans will likely get the equivalent of a big raise of a big raise next year. The 68 million people, including retirees, disabled people, and others, who rely on the benefits, are likely to receive a 6 to 6.1% COLA increase next year. Such a rise will outpace the average the average 1.4% average boosts the Social Security payments since 2010. Next month, the administration will announce its cost of living adjustment for 2022 and base it off of the annual increases in the Consumer Price Index. Now, the actual cost of the increase that the Social Security Administration announces next month is somewhat of a moving target and could dip to 5.9%. The high coal estimate for next year mostly has been driven by a higher gasoline and transportation costs. Overall, prices increased 5.4% annually in both June and July, and that's a 13% year, and that's a 13-year high. But inflation edged down to 5.3% in August. Such prices surged as the nation emerged from the crisis, and Americans started traveling again. Our seniors need financial assistance. Now let's see what Pelosi is saying about a fourth stimulus check, folks. The House Ways and Means Committee has prepped this portion of the $3.5 trillion bill, but many representatives including Stephanie Murphy, are not being supportive of this. Democrats are stuffing this bill with social spending to address what they argue are deficiencies. House Speaker Pelosi stands by the $3.5 trillion cost, and Pelosi did slightly crack the door ajar to the possibility of an even smaller bill. Still, the Speaker has questions for those pushing for a smaller bill, and this is starting to get challenging. Liberal Democrats are pressing Democratic leaders to stick with $3.5 trillion, and moderates are digging in their heels pushing for a smaller bill around $1.5 trillion to $2 trillion in total. Thank you so much for watching, and if you have any, and if you have any more questions about the Fort Stimulus check, leave them in the comments below. Republicans are shining a spotlight on the reckless taxing and spending spree that Washington Democrats are riding behind closed doors. The radical left is pushing in all their chips. They want to use this terrible but temporary pandemic as a Trojan horse for permanent socialism. And President Biden, who ran as a unifying moderate, is either powerless to stop them 
<clears throat> or does not wish to. An avalanche, an avalanche of crushing tax hikes that would hurt families and help China. A government power grab over more of America's health care decisions, child care choices, family finances, and daily lives. Trillions upon trillions more in government spending when families are already facing inflation. None of this, of course, will get a single Republican vote in either chamber. Democrats have not even consulted us. They haven't tried to earn our votes. From the start, they plan to use a party line fast track process to ram through the Senate this version of their vision of America. That's why Republicans will not help this unified democratic government with its basic duty to raise the debt ceiling. This could not be simpler. If they want to tax, borrow, and spend historic sums of money without our input, they'll have to raise the debt limit without our help. This is the reality. I've been saying this very clearly since July. And I think our Democratic colleagues are finally getting it because now they're fumbling for bogus excuses. They remain confident they can spend trillions of dollars to remake the entire economy in a couple of weeks, but supposedly they just cannot clear this much smaller procedural battle hurdle without Republican help. Really? Give me a break. Earlier this year, Senate Democrats specifically requested and received extra flexibility around the reconciliation process. They have every procedural tool they need to promptly advance a separate standalone piece of legislation addressing the debt limit without a single Republican vote. Our colleagues have plenty of time to get this done. It is laughable, laughable to hear some Democrats claiming they simply don't have enough time. Last month, Democrats introduced a sweeping budget resolution on August 9th and passed it before sunrise on August the 11th, three days. Our Democratic colleagues have about a month, a month, plenty of time to do their job as a unified government and protect the full faith and credit of the United States. The Democratic chairman of the House Budget Committee admitted last weekend that Democrats could, could, tackle the debt limit alone, they just don't want to. Some Senate Democrats have said similar things. This may be inconvenient for them, but it is totally possible. And this Democratic government must not manufacture an avoidable crisis for the sake of their own convenience. Senate Democrats know what they